Hello everybody, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and I'm joined by Luna and Luna's in her hot off the machine Daisy's twirling dress. So I've um, put together a little sew along with this for you with some tips to for you to make your own um, Daisy's twirling dress complete with net underskirt, lace trim, patch pocket and then little um, press stud with decorative buttons over the top. Um, fastening for the shoulders and I hope you enjoy sewing this with me so I'll leave it there for now I just wanted to show you the finished product as to what it is that I'm going to be making with you today and I hope you enjoy sewing along with me today this is already take two of my video and trying to um, speak to you and tell you what I'm going to be making Daisy's twirling dress um, so far I've been interrupted by the washing machine finishing choosing fabrics choosing trims looking at buttons and totally putting my procrastination central. So apologies that um, I'm smiling to myself, but I'm just, it's, it's just amusing sometimes, isn't it? How we sometimes put everything else in front of what we actually want to be doing, which is I just want to be sewing and sharing this with you and, and taking you along with me whilst I make this um, new dress for my Luna. So um, bear with me because I'm, I'm just, um, yeah, keep keep procrastinating, but I'm going to dive straight in and um, we'll get going and see what we can do. So for those that you aren't aware of um, Daisy's twirling dress, it's actually in this book here, which is Luna Lappin, Making New Friends. And it's this red gingham dress just here. You can't see it very well there. So let me turn to the correct page in the book and I will show you what it looks like. So there's a nice full length picture look. So it's a nice little special occasion dress for Daisy. It's from her story of when Luna meets the mayor. Um, but it, as I say, it'll fit any of the characters. So um, in this case, I'm going to make it fit onto my Luna. So the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to find the pages with the pattern in. So I've got page one, two, four and page the next page as well one two five one two six and one two six and what i want you to do is take your tracing paper or your grease proof paper whichever you're using this is um, a very nice alternative if you've got access to this and not onto the um, tracing paper and i want you to to put the paper over the top of the pattern in the book it's at full size so you can trace it exactly as it is and i want you to trace around this solid line okay not that you don't need to put the dotted line on, that's really just for reference. But I also want you to label up what each of the pieces are, the front and the back. I also want you to label up how many you need to cut and out of which fabric. So, so this is the bodice and, and lining and it needs to say cut two in main fabric. The other thing I want you to do is do the skirt as well. Oh, hold on a second now. There's little, there's little notches we need to take care of. See that little dot, that, sorry not dot, little dash just there on the edge there. And then there's another one just here, look and again here, and again here. I want you to mark those on your pattern as well. So just draw them onto your pattern because we need them there placement lines and we'll use those for later, so they're very important. And then when we come to draw the, trace out the skirt, this symbol here indicates that it needs to be cut on the fold. So again, copy that onto your um, pattern piece. And then these two pieces need to be joined together because it goes over the um, fold of the book. So just make sure you're joining up those two pieces when you're tracing so that you get the right width. It's not going to matter too much on this pattern piece because we're going to be gathering up that skirt in order for it to fit onto the top of the bodice. But it might for something else. Um, also, if you trace out the um, heart shape because you'll need two of those um, skirts and also your pocket stitching template, you'll need to, to, to cut out one of those, um, trace and cut out one of those as well. So let's get on and do those. The reason I'm suggesting you do this first before you choose your fabric is because once we've got these pattern pieces out, it'll be much easier to use the pattern pieces to make sure we're gonna have enough fabric before we start, rather than trying to hold your fabric up to your book to see whether it's going to work. So, so that's what I'd like us to do now, is just trace these off exactly as they are with all of the markings, but remembering just to join A to A and B to B over the fold of the book, um, because we need that heart to be complete on your pattern piece and that will tell us what to do. So again, just copy off what it is and what you need to do and put those on your pattern for future reference because whilst you've got the book here now, you might go travelling one day and have just your pattern with you and you'll need to know what you need to do. So let me go and do that and I'll come straight back to you. Okay, so once you've um, traced out your pattern pieces onto your paper, just rough cut them out like this like I've done just roughly. 
and then this will just make it easier to handle to cut them out individually like this um, and you're going to do that for all of the pieces the other thing that I want you to do as well is trace off this um, heart shaped um, stitching line and I'll show you how we're going to work with that later on um, but just for now let's just rough cut, rough cut them out first and then tr cut them out on the line and then we'll be ready to choose our fabric so now we've got our pattern pieces all cut out and ready to go what I want you to do is have a look at your fabric stash and see what fabrics you want to use. Now, you may already have chosen a fabric and been out and bought it specially, and you may want to match exactly what Sarah's done exactly and use a, a red gingham, and, and that's absolutely fine. Whatever you, this is, this is where your personal style and your personal design choices come in. And you can also, if you're going to be gifting your, um, your Luna in, in her outfit or the outfit for another character, then you can personalise that obviously to to um, your um, recipient. So if there's a particular interest that the person's got, maybe they're into maths or chemistry um, or numbers, there's lots of fabrics you can get in the quilting world that have got um, those designs printed onto them. They may like florals, they may like geometrics, they may like green, blue, the choices are endless. So this is where you've just got to have um, a bit of an idea. Now, what I would suggest is that we look at the scale of the fabric that you want to choose, the first scale of the design, because whilst Luna is fairly decent in, in size, then certain patterns are gonna look better on her. And also, depending on what colour felt you've chosen for her and maybe for the inserts in her ears and, and on her pads, and the same with the other characters, may determine what colour you want to use. So for example, if we take the fabric for my dress here, we might find that if I wanted to use the same fabric as I'd use for this dress, that actually this design is too big for Luna because it's gonna look so, so much larger on her in proportion to the size of her body. By contrast, if we look at something like this design here, one of the fat quarters that I've got, I'll just hold it up to the camera so you can see a little ditzy little um, print. Then if we just hold it up against Luna, we can say, if we don't get too much white out from the light, that actually that's quite nice, but that's going to be quite pale against the, the colour of her, her skin here. So again, we can look at that. I've got a bigger one in this same design here. And again, we can just see how the different size prints look onto our characters. So again, this one I would say, for me, feels a little big. This one here, it feels a little plain. Um, I've got fabrics such as this one, which is very nice. I mean, that's a lovely little ditzy fabric. So something of that kind of scale would look really nice too. Um, but also you've got to be careful because you're trying to think about making your job easy for yourself. So I did like, before, where's it gone? did like this fabric here, which is a, um, a um, Lynette Anderson fabric. That's the one, I'm trying to remember. Um, and she does a lot of lovely designs, but this has got a little check in it, if you see. And that's fine, but we've just got to remember that Daisy's skirt, if I get the piece here, is not a rectangular piece that we're going to gather. This curved edge at the top, as soon as we start to put that onto a pattern, that's got a very strong design to it, straight away, even if we're straight on the line here, we're gonna be off and it's going to be changing the pattern round. Now, that's not a major consideration if you're happy with that, but all I'm saying is just be aware of it because I'd hate for you to cut into some precious fabric that has a strong pattern on it or a directional pat pattern on it and you find that you've turned a piece upside down in order to make it fit on that pattern or your lines are going to go off and go skewy and um, same as if you used a, a lined fabric I've got a scrap here look with a pink line on it as soon as we put that and line that up with a line that's fine here but as we go round here to the other part this the lines are all going to still go down the same way so the pattern's going to be skew with on your fabric so I'm going to suggest either you choose something that's quite easy to match up, like a gingham, because that's going to be okay, or I'm going to take the easy option and I'm going to choose an all over ditzy. So I've got this lovely fabric here, which I think is going to look really nice on Luna in a lovely dress. 
nice small print, lots of colours in there, so that's going to match with all of her other features and, and, and how she is. But also it's not got a strong direction any one way, so that's going to make it easier when we're cutting out and when we're making. And hopefully that'll be obvious when, when, we, when we go through. So this is the fabric I'm going to use, and that's mainly been, been, been influenced as well um, by the fact that I've got some, let me just get this bag open here, the dress calls for some net um, dress net or tool sometimes it's called tool as well so I've got this navy blue or this this deep blue so I'm gonna I think that's gonna look really nice underneath the blue of her dress here with the other colors in there so that's what I'm going to use had I have got enough in white I probably would have chosen a different color but this is the beauty of it isn't it we can just choose so you're going to need your dress fabric and you're going to need your net now, if you find, because the, the, the top of this dress for Daisy's, Daisy's twirling dress is actually self-lined, as they call it. So in this case, it's lined in exactly the same fabric as it has on the outer. If you've only got a small amount and you can't fit all of it out of that pattern, then what you can do is you can use a different lining fabric and that could be quite a nice contrast as well. So it might be I use that for the outside, but I might use that for the inside. Or you might have an old recycled shirt like I have here from one of Rob's shirts and you could use a different colour on the inside and that can make a really nice contrast, especially if you want to make shoes, you could then make shoes to match the lining or the pocket could match the lining. And again, this is where all of your design creativity can just run absolutely wild, but don't get like me and then start procrastinating over what you're going to choose because otherwise we'll never get anywhere. So <laughs> bear, bear with yourself, give yourself um, a bit of time to choose what you want to do and hopefully you'll be able to, to find. But I've chosen this fabric and also for the camera and for filming, I wanted a fabric that's got a distinct right and wrong side so that when I'm sewing, you can tell which side I'm working with, whether it's right sides together or wrong sides together. Um, and I'll probably use a less coordinating thread. I'd probably use an off-white for sewing this normally, but I'll probably use a dark blue so that you can actually see on the wrong side where I've stitched, which will make it just a bit easier. See, I am learning about when I'm doing these videos as to how to try and help and to, to, to um, represent what I'm doing and how you can pick it up best. So you're going to need your coordinating thread. You could always, always have chosen a pink with this as well, or the blue. There's green in there. So there's plenty there. So use what you've got in your stash as well. Don't think you've always got to dash out and, and pick everything straight away from no. Um, the only thing I'm also going to say is just be careful when you're choosing your fabric, because I thought at first that I could have used... I can't find it. I'll use this one here. Um, so pretend this is a different fabric. I could have used a fat quarter which is a square quarter of a, piece, of a one metre length piece of fabric that has been halved one way and then across. If you buy a long quarter, you'll find it's this way and it's, and it's twice, as, twice as long that way. So it's either a long skinny piece for a long quarter or it's a square piece for a fat quarter. Now in actual fact, Daisy's twirling dress, because of the way it's been cut out, to make the hem length longer than the waist edge, it actually doesn't fit onto a fat quarter because if we line that side up, it's got to be cut on the double. You can see this bit here is, is off the edge of the, of the fabric. So just be aware of that. You're probably gonna to have to go for a half meter, I think. And um, Sarah actually says she want, you want 40 centimeters. So 40 centimeters, 50 centimeters is a half meter by the width of the fabric, so you're probably gonna need a half meter in order to make this dress, which sounds a lot of fabric, but you're gonna have some left over and you're gonna be able to use it to um, complement little um, outfits in the future. You might be able to use it for a pocket or the inside of a lining. So it's not wasted, we'll, we'll save all of those pieces. So I've got a meter piece, I think, or two meter piece of this, um, this blue fabric, so I've got plenty there. The last thing that you're going to need is on the bottom of this, well, not the last thing, but one of the last things, um, design choices, you're going to need some ribbon or some lace for the bottom of her skirt here, if you want to put it on. Obviously, you can leave it off if you want to. Um, and um, Sarah Peel has used um, some embroidery on lay um, ribbon, which is fine. But again, have a look at your stash, see what you've got, see what um, you've, you've picked up. I've got... This fabric here, which is very nice, oh, fabric, lace here, which is very nice. And I could always put the, oh, let me put it on the knee and then you'll be able to see. 
I can always put the circles onto the bottom of this dress or I could always use it that way and actually sew it that way up and, and create quite a nice detail. But again, when we're talking about scale, I think that this lace is actually going to be too big a scale for Luna. So I'm gonna not use that one for today. It was just to show you how scale can be really important. So take your Luna shopping with you if you want to and just hold things up. This also is quite a sweet little trim. Oh, sorry, I put Luna down. Um, it's a sweet little trim as well, which is the um, little pom-poms. And that could look quite nice. Just tucked on the inside of the fabric so that the pom-poms hang down. And that could look really sweet and it's quite a modern finish as well if you're wanting something a little bit more modern again it's going to depend on who your recipient is and making sure that these little um, puffs are, are sewn on tightly enough um, and they're not going to cause a choking risk so do be careful of of that as well the one that i do like is actually this ribbon here and that's quite a sweet one and i've been wanting to use this on some things for a while so if I just put that on the edge of the lace there, then you can see that that could look quite nice under there. So I think what I'm going to do is, oh, I've got another one here as well, which I chose. So I've got several, and what I'm going to do is actually wait, because the pom-pom um, trim will go on at the end, and so we can wait until we've actually made our dress up. So as we know we've got some options, and we've got plenty here, then we can always wait and, wait and see. And an actual fact, you're going to need... Um, one and a half yards of um, trim so actually that's quite a lot of quite a lot of trim and we'll see how much we use in the end um, but that will will go quite well because if you think about it your skirt pattern piece this is cut on the fold because of the um, pattern so we actually get you to use four times the length of this which is really quite full so that's what's going to give the drama to the dress so as I say, just make sure you've got enough of what you want to choose. Use the instructions in the book because that does tell you how much you need of everything of your fabric and all the other things that you need. Um, and then once we've got things together, look at this massive fabric. <laughs> Welcome to my world. This is what happens, everything just goes everywhere. Um, so I'm just going to tidy this up so we've got some room to work and then we're going to talk about pinning our pattern onto the fabric and then we're going to get cutting out and we'll get going. So... Um, Hopefully you're still with me so far. Hopefully I'm not bamboozling you um, and hopefully all of this is useful. So let's um, let's get moving on to, I'll get tidied up and then I'll be back to you. Just stop me tidy up just because I thought of one extra thing. If you're on a budget or you don't have a fabric stash as yet, then don't worry about that. Keep an eye on what you're putting into your charity bag for going um, for old clothing. Um, anything that's 100% cotton, actually is really valuable fabric so as long as it's not too faded um, or it's not too marked then that makes an absolutely fabulous source so if you've grown out of something if the kids have grown out of something um, husband or, or whatever um, then there is a video on my channel as well as to how to cut up a shirt um, and, that, and it really goes for any piece of clothing um, and how to salvage the fabric from it in order to add that to your stash so in actual fact, this, this pink gingham that I'm going to be using for the lining of um, Daisy's dress, just so that you can see the difference between the two fabrics that I'm using, um, is actually a recycled shirt from my husband. So again, you know, it's just, just think creatively. Um, even going into the charity shop, have a look on the pound rails that they sometimes have outside the door. Um, and if you find a shirt that you like the design of, um, that's that's the small enough print or what have you, and... and Lots of firms, sorry. If you see a shirt there that you like, or a, a skirt, or a dress, a pound for that kind of garment is fabulous fabric. So again, bring it home, get it through the wash, um, and then just um, snip off the seams, as I show you in that video. I'll try and find a way to link it up here if I can do for you, so you don't have to go searching for it, but it's how to recycle a shirt um, on my channel. Then you can use that, so don't think that the cost of something is going to preclude you from from making um, something because hopefully you'll you'll find that they're either with something you've already got in your wardrobe that you don't wear anymore or that or that you can find in a charity shop is a really really good source of fabric. So I'll, I'll carry on tidying up now. I've I've finished with that bit and then I've um, and then we'll we'll move on. So grab your fabrics together and then the next thing we're going to do is going to iron it. I just want you to make sure that it's kind of not got all these creases in because those kind of creases can distort your pattern pieces when you're cutting them out. 
so just it i mean you're going to need that iron a fair amount actually in in whilst we're constructing this dress because it's really useful to press your seams as you've as you've made them it really elevates your sewing and and gives a really nice finish sometimes things when they are finished can be have been made taken from a 2d flat piece of fabric into a 3d dress with shapes and curves and what have you so actually by pressing as you go along you're using the ability to press it while it's flat um, and that's why it gives you such a good good finish so pop all of your fabrics across apart from the dress net don't try and iron the dress net it will will melt um, and if you uh, and just to say you can leave the dress net out if you want to as well that's not a compulsory one i'm going to include it because it's in the book and in the in the design but if you don't want to include the dress net you don't have to you could use a plain piece of cotton and just treat it the same way as the skirt and we'll just make it just slightly shorter to take a little bit extra off and, and hem that and you can use that to make your dress too so again ju just think creatively you don't have to always go out and buy everything but once you've got it let's get it pressed and then it's in the best way possible then to be able to use it so in order to start cutting it out i want you to establish which is your selvage edge which is this bound edge which doesn't fray and which are your cut edges which do fray okay and that's going to give you a clue as to which way to fold your fabric because what I want you to do is lay your pattern pieces alongside the selvage. So that is to say that we, I don't want you to put your pattern pieces skew if on the fabric um, or twisted, whatever, whatever word you use in your area. Um, but I want you to, to always have your um, pattern pieces lying parallel, so alongside on the same line as this bound edge, this bound selvage edge, because there's there's fibres that run through your um, fabric. It's sewn on a grid with um, fibres going down and then fibres are woven across it. And if you start to distort those, you're going to be um, sewing what's called on the bias or cutting out on the bias. And that allows your fabric to have more stretch. I've covered this again on another one. So here your fabric's really, really strong. And this way it's really strong. But if you go to this way, can you see how that's pulling and how my hands are moving apart and stretching? That's called on the bias. And sometimes we want that stretch, other times we don't. And on this dress, everything's going to be laid parallel to the piece of um, fabric that you've got. So we're going to line our fabric down on our work surface. Get my orientation right. Because I've already cut a piece out of this, so I want to make sure that I'm still cutting out in that. And we're just going to fold the fabric for now. So if you can, you're going to fold selvage to selvage. So you've got bound edge to the bound edge because I've taken a piece out of this piece of fabric already for something else. Um, then I'm just going to do it to the cut edge that I've got at the moment. So that will just give us a clue just for, for, for laying it down onto a work surface. And I'm just going to twist you round so that you can see. I'll wait until I've... I won't make anybody sick, so I'll just twist you round. So this is where you find out how good my tidying up was. Hmm... Maybe not as good as it should be. Anyway, I digress. So what we're going to do first of all to make sure that we've got this fabric folded straight. If you're folding selvage to selvage, then you don't need to worry. But if you're working from a scrap, shall we say, like I am, then what I want you to do is just have a tape measure handy because you're going to need to measure to make sure that your width across the top here is the same as your width further down. And that will then mean that you've got more um, area to be able to make sure that these lines are straight and we're not starting to go a bit on a diagonal. Um, I have got some fabric that I'm going to use separately for my lining. And so I'm going to cut mine out slightly differently to the way that you will. And I'll just I'll just do a quick thing on that. But if you're if you're a beginner and you're using the same fabric for the front and the back, then then we'll cover that as well. So the first thing that we're going to do is before we do anything else is have a look and see how much width we need. We know that this piece, skirt piece needs to be placed on a fold because of the symbol that we've got here, which is the fold symbol. And that's the same through any dressmaking pattern. If you see that, you know that pattern piece is going to be on a fold. And the reason they put it on a fold is so that you don't have a seam down the centre of the dress because this seam here is going to be the side of the dress. And if we didn't cut this one on a fold, you'd have a seam down the centre front and the centre back as well. So by cutting on a fold, when you open your piece out, you'll have one continuous piece so it doesn't put a, put a seam down the front. So what we're going to do here is, I'm just going to roughly work out how big this piece of 
fabric needs to be folded in order to maintain the, the, the size that I need. Okay, so by here I can see, ooh, you can't, but I can, that across here I just need to then fold this fabric across. So I'm going to take it away because I, I don't like wasting fabric. I'm not very good at um, not wasting fabric, I must admit. So we're going to roughly just fold it again and offer our pattern piece up as if we were going to pin it, but before we put any pins in it. And that cut edge goes onto the fold line and I can see that it doesn't come off the pattern piece here. The pattern piece doesn't come off the fabric here, but it's very close to the top. The other thing to make sure is that on the top here that your fabric is straight as well because not all not all shop owners cut fabric straight on the fold so again just be aware of that so what well, that we're about right but the next thing that i always do and i do this with dressmaking as well as with with toy making because let's have best practice all the way through is i'm just going to measure across here to see how far we are so we're 12 and a 12 not quite 12 and a quarter inches there and down here at the bottom, the way I folded it, it's not the same, it's 12. So I know that this fabric is slightly off um, to one side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to straighten it up and make sure that I get both distances from this cut edge here. So that's 12 and a quarter. And that's 12 and a quarter. So I'm happy now that throughout the, the area that I'm going to be cutting out for this, this skirt, that this piece of fabric is, is straight. It's on the straighter grain. I have got a slight step at the top here. So I'm just going to be aware of that when I'm placing my pattern piece. So, sorry. So I'm happy that this pattern, this fabric, this fabric is now folded correctly and is straight. That's the important thing. I've not got... 12 here and then 14 down the bottom in terms of the width on my tape measure. So what I'm going to do now is offer the fabric, the pattern piece up now, but make sure that I'm allowing for this little step at the top here to make sure that my fabric is going to be straight. Once we've done that, then you can put your pattern weights or whatever you use onto your piece of fabric to hold it still for you. I use these lovely um, stones that were made for my, by my um, old school friend, um, Louise for me and they've been hand painted so that's a real treat to use those isn't it lovely to use pretty things and I know that by feeling I can tell that that's not, I'm not going to lose the corner of my pattern piece once we've done that we can then reach for our pins and our pin cushion and we're just going to put our pins in through to our fabric now we always pin along the edge that we're going to cut so as we can see we've got a pin in here and we're going to carry on along this cut edge. Usually about a quarter of an inch in. You don't want to be right in the middle because otherwise your fabrics, your pattern piece is going to flap around too much. So you need to follow alongside and along the edge of your pattern. We don't need to pin on the folded edge because we're not going to cut that edge. But we just need to make sure that we've got a good starting point and finishing point. So I'm just folding that there. And again, let's just pop these pieces of these pins in here. Oh, just pin myself. Occupational hazard. And again, let's pin across the top here too. So as you can see, my pins when I'm pinning out couple of inches apart really for where they are is that a couple of inches yeah probably about two to three inches apart as you're going through and once you've pinned it down you can take your pattern weights off because you know that piece now isn't going to move because this piece is on a fold then we know that that is a straight line and we know that's going to be the center front of the skirt and the center of the back so we know that that's all straight when we come onto these pieces here though which is the, this one's the front and we've got the back here as well. What we need to be aware of is that when we're putting this, offering this up to our fabric, sometimes these pattern pieces can get twisted. 
So again, we need to just be aware of that. So what I'm going to say is that we can remember those little bits that I asked you to mark on this, this um, little mark just here in the one on the hemline. That's actually the centre front um, or the middle of those two seams, which are placement lines, which are really useful for matching up. So in this situation, what I'm going to ask you to do is to get a straight edge and to draw them, draw a line between the two. So on here, I can use a seam gauge, just being careful. So I'm going to line my ruler up alongside or in line with those pieces. And I'm just going to draw a line down between the two. And that actually is going to give me what's called a grain line. Because we know this pattern piece doesn't want to be skew whiff on it, especially if we're using a striped fabric, say. So by marking up the centre front and the centre front at the bottom here on the, on the bottom of the bodice, this gives us two measuring points that we can then use to make sure it's our pattern pieces are straight. So what we can do is when we are pinning this onto our fabric here, we're going to use a pattern weight again and put it in the centre. Just one, so keeping it away from the selvage edge. We don't want this bound edge to be part of what we're cutting out, even if we're really tempted, because sometimes it can distort our fabrics. But what we can do now is we can measure from that from the line. I think you can let me do the bottom one instead, you'll be able to see that better. So from the bottom here, this line here, I'm going to now measure from that line to my edge. So it's just just over. So it's two eighths of an inch, one eighth of an inch, two eighths of an inch over eight and a three quarters. And then without moving the pattern piece, if you've got a, if these are small pattern pieces, we're then going to measure from the top of that line as well over and see if it's straight. And on mine it is, so at mine it's going to the same point. We can't see it's off the camera, but it's not going to the same point. You're going to have to trust me, I don't want to sort of start and move things around. So do use that on your pattern pieces. Just draw that centre front to the centre bottom. If you're doing dressmaking patterns, quite often they'll have a grain line on it, and that's the line I'm referring to. But by measuring from those set points to the edge of your fabric, you will then determine that that piece is actually straight on your fabric and it hasn't been twisted. So if you are going to be making your front and your back of your um, twirling dress out of the same fabrics, then pin these pieces onto your fabric when it's double and that will automatically mean that you cut out two pieces in this, two mirrored pieces. So go ahead, pin that your pieces on the same way if you're doing that. If you're choosing to have a different um, fabric for your lining, then I'm going to tell you a different way to do it. Um, so you can switch off your ears if you don't want to do that. But for, for this, if you're going to have them both the same, put that on... Put your fabric on there. Measure the same for your um for your your bodice. Um, oh, I can't move this. Do the same for your bodice back as well. Um, in the same way, draw a line down between those points. Measure it to the edge and make sure your fabric is straight. Uh, um, and, and your pattern piece is straight, and that that will help you. Okay. Fast forward if you don't want to do a different lining. If you do want to do a different lining, which is what I'm going to do because I think it'll help when when I'm showing you. Using your grain line, we only actually want one piece of each of these cut. And if we fold along that grain line that we've just drawn, this time on the front piece, we can see that the pattern actually lies exactly on the same. So these two pieces here are symmetrical along that, along that, that drawn line. The same with this one here. Let me draw a grain line on this one so that we've got a reference point to work with. Because what we actually need to cut is we need to cut one of each of these pieces out of our top fabric and we need to cut one of each of these pieces out of our main fabric. You can just have your fabric single, single layer and cut it out or you can then um, make sure use this to cut it in half, not cut it in half, fold it in half and that will give you one piece and then now with my lining fabric I can put this in half, give me a fold line, and then I can place the pattern piece onto the fold line, and then I just cut it out the ones. So that's what I'm going to do. If you're in a more advanced sewer, then, then you can do that. Um, so as I say, either have your fabric flat and cut one out this way. So you've just got one, it's just one thickness. Or you can fold your pattern piece in half, 
give yourself a fold and make sure it's straight obviously after I've just gone into all that detail so then here it's easier with stripes to make sure that it's straight put your folded pattern piece onto the fabric line it up and then you can cut that out so I hope that gives you a quick tip as to how to use um, the different fabrics if you've not got enough of your main one so what we're going to do is do that now now what I want you to do with the heart shape, because that's the only piece left, you've got the two bodice pieces and the skirt piece, which we've already spoken about. With the heart um, pocket, this is actually a stitching template. So what Sarah wants you to do is she wants you to find a scrap of fabric that will fit your piece on, but don't cut out around the line. Cut it out as a square or with a bit of a bigger seam allowance around the edge, wherever you can fit it in, or if you wanted to use your contrast fabric to make a pocket. Um, but again, you're not cutting out on that line because once you stitch, that'll be too small. So the outside edge of the shape is actually the stitching line. So just come out, either cut off a square when you've got your fabric double. She says use a scrap of fabric and depend on how much you've got and how much you want to waste. We could either put it on a, on a diagonal like that if we wanted to. Um, but whichever way you want to do it, just cut out so that you've got a nice big square, a nice big margin round, because then what we're going to do is we're going to draw round this shape here and we're going to then stitch actually on that drawn line. And it will just give you, sometimes with these small shapes when they've got a lot of curves like this heart pocket has, it means that the fabric shifts underneath the presser foot. And I can show you how to sew and pivot um, and we'll do that anyway when we're sewing this, but just to give yourself the best chance of success, just cut this piece out as a square in whichever fabric, whether it's the same or the contrast, and that will then just give you um, a better chance of getting that really lovely smooth line. And we'll, we'll talk about how to smooth those lines out as well as we get into things. So what I want you to do next is then pin your pattern pieces onto your fabric, the way I've said, make sure that they're straight, and then we'll, we'll get started on, on cutting out the net, which is next after that bit. So let's cut our fabric out first, then we'll cut our net. Also, just remember that we're actually cutting out two of these. So make sure that you can either trace your pattern piece off again, so you've got two if you want, and to make sure that you've got enough room on your fabric, um, or just, just cut one out, unpin it, put it to one side, use the same pattern piece to cut the other. I don't recommend lying it on top again when you've got um, it already cut out once. I would suggest you take your fabric off first, um, but obviously it's up to you. So um, we'll do that bit next. So I'm going to unpin this pattern from this piece, put it back onto my fabric, and then I'm going to cut out Daisy's second twirling dress piece. And then we'll take one will be the front of the dress skirt and one will be the back of the dress skirt. So I'm just ready to start and cut out on my dress net and as you can see it's quite springy as a fabric. Um, it can be quite difficult to work with especially in um, larger size pieces. Um, so on here we're quite lucky that it's it's not too, too big a piece. You can on here because there's no pattern, no nap, um, you can fold it in half and on the length and then fold it across so you'll actually be cutting out your two pieces in one go so i'm actually quartering this up match it up on the side and just make sure that your pattern is going to be on all of your edges so move this along a little bit more and i think that's how i'm going to cut mine out if you're not happy with working in that way not quite wide enough just a bit more um if you're ha not happy working in that way then just work on single single widths as I say, I'm not very precious about this dress net, so it doesn't matter. But just make sure that your fold is together on that side and that you can cut it out at the top and at the bottom. You can still pin through and it will still hold for you. As I say, um, working with tool and working with dress net can be quite quite tricky. But it's, again, it's another little skill to, to have and add on to your arsenal. 
certainly lovely on some little girls dresses um, just be aware that if you're ever sewing with this fabric um, if you're making dressmaking for children or for yourself you're always going to need some some kind of fabric as a lining so that it between the dress net and your skin because having this again even on a waist um where it's gathered at a waistband or against your legs is really really itchy and uncomfortable so again when you're working with this type of thing you'd either have a have a slip on or you'd put another layer of lining between your top fabric your dress net and then you'd have a layer of lining underneath for your dress so i'm just going to cut this out now that'll give me four cut on um, sorry not four two cut on the fold and then we'll be ready to move forward Okay, so I've just laid out my pattern pieces now so we can just check that we've got all the pieces we need. So let's start with the bodice first. The back bodice, we've got our pattern piece and we've got one cut out in our main fabric and I've cut one out in the lining. You may have two of the same fabrics. Our front, again, one out of our main fabric and one out of our lining that I'm using, but again, you may have two of the same. The heart pocket, I've got my scrap of fabric that we're using and I've got this doubled, so there's two layers there. And I've just pinned my pocket onto there for the moment. So I'm not actually cut that out to size. As we said, we're leaving the outline around so it'll make it easier for us to stitch because this is actually the stitching line on the outside edge here. It isn't a cut out line. So that's how that should look. And then with our skirt pieces, our pattern pieces here, and I've got two pieces of main, main skirt. And because this was cut on the fold, if you remember, this is how your pattern piece was there. Once we open that out, look how full that skirt is. It's going to be beautiful. And this is where I say when we actually sew it, it's going to then drop down like this to give Daisy lots of room for twirling um, or Luna, whichever character you're making it for. And so that's why it's so full. So we've got two pieces out of our top fabric, the front and the back. And then we've got two pieces cut out of the dress net to the front and the back so that's where you should be at this moment in time folks hopefully you are so let's just put all these pieces together i just put a little pin through the middle i spread them out just to show you what we've got but let's just pin those together now so that they don't get detached from each other and have a nice little pile next to us for sewing with now with your skirt piece before we go any further we just want to mark up the pattern placement for this pocket so what i'm going to ask you to do is take one of your outside pieces of fabric, your top fabric for the outside of the dress, refold it, you may not have unfolded it already, but just make sure that's all on top of each other nicely and lined up. Because what I want you to do then is I am going to get you to pop your pattern piece back on. Now actually, we're only gonna mark it on one side and I think that the dress in the picture is on the left hand side as we're looking at the pattern so if we open this out i'll just turn the pattern piece over because i can see where that part is so i've got my cut edge lined up with the cut edge Ooh, let's go up a bit and then the fold line is against the fold line that was on the skirt and i'm just going to use a couple of pins one either side of this heart just to hold it in place for me whilst I mark where I want those lines to be. Now, there's a couple of ways you can mark this. You might have um, one of these, which is a, called a, a Frixion pen. It's got erasable ink in it and it's heat erasable. I can, you can get these from Asda, um, actually. Um, and you can do a little circle if you wanted to at the top and the bottom of this little point here, which would probably give us enough of a, a mark line. I don't know if you can see, but I can see the outline of my heart on my, on my, through my tracing paper. Um, it's upside down because I wanted the fold line to be on here um, and that's the way that it, the pattern piece needs to be. Um, the other thing is that you can do is do what's called a tailor's tack. So I'm just gonna show you how to do those. Because if you get a contrasting thread, so we can use this orange because that's quite a nice contrast and just take off a length. If you take a hand sewing needle, and this is a really useful tip to have when you've got to mark things like button placements or um, darts or anything like that. Just thread your needle so it's double and put your ends together. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just do what's called a tailor's tack. And what we do is we go to the point that we want to mark. So at this point, I'm gonna mark the bottom of the heart. 
and I'm just going to take a little bite of fabric through the pattern and come out again. So just like that, hopefully you can see that I'm going through there. Let me see if I get you a bit closer. Hold on one second. So I've taken a bite out of the fabric there with my needle and thread. And I'm just going to pull it through till I've got about an inch, a couple of inches um, tail left. And then what I'm going to do is at right angles to that original stitch, hopefully my hands aren't in the way, I'm going to now take a little bite again the other way. The stitch is about the same size and it's the, the threads are going to cross underneath or on top. And that the centre of that is just going to give me, so keep this loop straight and make it about the same length as your tail. And then what you want to do is just cut off your threads, leaving that loop and the tail, and then cut through the loop. Okay. So let me, um, let's do that again as well at the top. So I'm just going to go now to the top of the, um, where the two V's of the, of the heart come together. Because if I match up those two points, I know pretty much the rest of it is going to be straight. So I don't need to mark all the way around this pocket, especially if it's going to leave a mark on the fabric. We only need to just to mark some reference points. So again, I'm going to go take a bite of fabric right on that very point of the V. I'm going to leave a tail an inch, inch and a half long. And then I'm going to go at right angles again. And this can be as small and delicate as you want. I'm obviously making it a little bit bigger because I'm on camera. But And again, leave a nice long loop. Cut off your needle and put that somewhere safe so it doesn't get mixed up with your stitching. And then cut through the loop. So what you're left with is these two tassely bits of thread, really, that you can then mark. Because if we take the pins out now... And then we gently ease our pattern off our fabric. Your, the threads will pull through the paper pattern and be left in the fabric. And we then know that the, this is the top and the bottom of the heart pocket when we come to fix that on. Hopefully, if you, if you leave your threads long enough, they don't come unpulled. And you've got to remember not to think it's just a loose piece of thread and just pull it off. But hopefully that will, will mark it. When you mark them when, when you're when you, it's going on to both, the mark is going on to both parts of the dress. So, so like it's a skirt front and you've got a dart that's going to be in for shaping on your dress, which one this one hasn't. You would do exactly the same thing, but you would go through all layers of your fabric with your two rows of stitches. Peel your pattern off carefully, holding onto the threads if you need to. But then when you open up your fabric here, you'll see the threads between the two pieces. Shall I just do you a quick one just to show you? I know, it, I know I'm going off at a tangent, but sometimes it's while we're in the moment. So say we've got to mark our pattern down here. What we would do is we would do the same technique. We would make a cross with our threads, make sure they don't get too tangled. And then we would then go the opposite direction, so at 90 degrees, because this kind of makes a cross on the other side of the fabric. I'll show you in a second. We cut off our needle and thread and we cut through our loop. So I've gone through it. So if we look on the other side of the fabric here, hopefully you can see there's a yellow cross just there, which obviously marks the, the, the point that we were marking. So then when we peel our pattern off carefully first, just hold on to your threads with your finger if you need to, so they don't get stuck. And we can remove the pattern. Then when you've got to separate your two pieces of fabric, you can pull them apart and you can see the threads here through both pieces. And what you do then is you get your scissors and you snip through those threads, being very careful not to cut your fabric. And can you see we've got those that same place marked on both pieces of fabric now. So you can carry on sewing knowing that you've got that, that place marked. And these threads generally are quite robust. As long as you don't start pulling them around, you can they will generally stay in, in the fabric. So for now, we don't need that one. That was just me demonstrating how you cut them in half when you've got it going through two pieces. But as I say, we had opened out our fabric and it was only going through one side. So the cross for us is on the back here. The cross is on the back here. But that's now marked that pattern placement and we know where the top and the bottom of the heart are going to be. So that's what I want you to do on that piece. And then the other thing that I want you to do is taking your fabric pieces for your front and your back bodice, line them up really nicely so they're perfectly on top of each other. Put your pattern piece back on. And then down here on the centre of the bodice, I want you to just make a little snip into your 
two fabrics and um, you go through your pattern as well obviously because that's where your face is marked. So making sure you're going through all bits. And you're only doing it a couple of a couple of eighths of an inch because when you when you take your pattern piece away, that mark is very easy to see. And if you go cut straight through, you might just cut through your stitching line. So you need to make sure that it's small enough that it doesn't go through your stitching line, but it's big enough for you just to be able to see because we're going to use that in the future when we're doing our mark. So mark the centre one. I don't think you need to mark the centre one on the top here. That was just useful to know where the um, where the cross point was. Let's keep our pattern pieces together. We're going to do exactly the same here. So let's get these marked back, these matched back up again as much as I can. Okay, pattern piece back onto the onto the bottom, matching everything up. And then take our scissors and we're just going to do that little snip again just oh, get underneath my fabrics just into there just so that we can see where that is okay pin on there to hold those two together again and i also want you to do the same with the skirt as well so on the skirt we're actually going to fold it in half on this waist seam just make sure they're lying nicely together and then just here, I just want you just to go inside here and just do a little snip just there to mark that centre point. And what that's going to do is it's going to just be a reference point for the centre so that we can match everything up. And especially when you're gathering a skirt, like we're going to be gathering this one. So let's just put the little snip in here again while I'm just talking. We want to make sure that we've got half the fabric gathered this side of the skirt and half the fabric gathered that side. And so having that little reference point will just mean that when we start to gather this up, it'll give us some idea of success to make sure that it's all gathered properly. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, I'm not gonna bother with the net. You can if you want to. It's a little bit more difficult to see it on net because of the way that the um, construction is. Oh, shall I do? I'll do it properly, I'll do it properly and show you, shall I? If you do want to press your net because it's a bit creased, always use a press cloth, put a tea towel over it or something like that. That'll take the heat, the bulk of the heat away from the fabric for you, just so that it means that you can it'll put in the middle there. So that's those done. So that, that's what we would need to just do. We need to just to mark those. I've got one there. Have I got one there? No, I missed that one. Let's do that one separately. But to say net is quite difficult to work with sometimes, but sometimes it's good to have a little bit of a challenge. So again, we've got a little cut there just to mark the centre of that. So folks, we're on to starting to look at sewing. So let's get our machine set up next and we'll be ready to move on to getting some stitching done finally. Lots of time for prep, but prep is really important. So try not to skip that step if you can and... Um, take the time to get it right okay back in a minute okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to now start and do the actual sewing and what i want to do is i want you to take either the front or the back it doesn't matter to you which you work with first take off your pattern piece but just keep it to one side because we're going to put that back on when we've when we've done our sewing and i want you to take the two pieces that you've got your main fabric and your lining these might be the same fabrics for you but it's the it's the ones that are the same pattern piece as the one that you've just taken off so you are having two the same. So the two that you cut out of this pattern piece, those are the bits that you're going to be lining up. And we're going to line these up on top of each other as best as we can. There might be some slight variances unless they've been cut at the same time. But as long as they're there or thereabouts, we're going to even this up with our seam allowance anyway. And I'm going to just put a pin down the middle of the strap here. And the same with this one here, because that will just help anchor everything together. And have an anchored a pin down here for the neckline as well which will help keep things to place and these two side pieces should be okay just make sure though that one's not caught backwards and folded back like that when you've pinned it because you'll have to undo that bit otherwise so make sure you've got your two pieces together so perhaps we should put a pin in just to make sure that we're, we're we know where we are with those okay 
And then what we're going to do now is we're going to sew, and we're going to start off at this side edge here. We're going to sew across here and pivot, up, across and down. So plenty of pivoting practice for you as we go along here. So what do I mean by pivoting? It's best demonstrated, so let me show you. So with my sewing, I'm going to use the edge of my presser foot as my guide. But when I come here, what we actually want to do in, at the, any of these corners we're going to turn is we've got to guesstimate where that quarter of an inch is. If you want to, you can use your Fritzian pen, which is a heat erasable pen. And you can mark in from here, quarter of an inch, going across there. And you kind of mark in just your reference points and quarter of an inch is there. So where those lines meet are where you want to stop sewing. Now, because I'm going to use the edge of my presser foot, I might not hit that point exactly, but I'm confident enough that I'm going to be there or thereabouts with mine. But if you're a new sewist, there's no problem at all in just marking these little places. So just again here, let's just go in quarter of an inch and do a line going down. And then across here, quarter of an inch, and that will give you a start and stop point at each of your place because your needle will stop at that point there and you know you've got quarter of an inch and it'll be equal. And again, you can do another reference there, 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 and there. As I say, it's up to you where you want to, to go. But you can also use those lines for checking where your placement of your presser foot is as well. So I can see that actually, if I use this little line on my presser foot there, then that's going to give me the right length as to where I want, what right width as to where I want to be. So I'm going to start towards the edge of my fabric, take my pin out so we don't, we don't sew over pins in, in these classes, and then we're going to, well not, not if we can help it anyway, and we remember. So we're going to hold on to our threads, we're going to start sewing a couple of stitches forward, and then we're going to reverse a couple of stitches back, and I'm going to use my needle up, needle down button so that whenever I stop sewing I'll always be, have my needle down in my work. If you've not got those buttons, don't worry, just hand crank your, your needle down because we, we want it to be anchored. And we're going to start and sew towards this point here. Don't worry about winning any speed races. We're not worried about that. So just do one stitch at a time if you need to. And then when you've got to the point where we think we're in the middle of that cross, we're going to leave our needle down in the work but lift up our presser foot with a lever. And what that means is that the needle is actually holding onto our fabric so we can move this round, but we're not going to lose our place. This is a fabulous tip as well for when you're top stitching as well, if ever you're doing any top stitching. So now we're going to line up again with the direction we're sewing with the angle of our line. And then we're going to start sewing again. Now we're not started and stop, so we don't need to go backwards and forwards on that point. And this needle is just, pin is just throwing that line of stitching out slightly. So one more stitch, I think. So leaving our needle in our work, lift up your presser foot and twist round. And we're looking at the angle of the cut edge here. And we're going to start and sew across that one as well. Until we think we're about there or thereabouts. One more stitch. Oops, that's it. And then we're going to then come down here. And again, we're going to guesstimate where we are down here. So let's come down to where we think we are. And we can just twist our fabric again and just see if we're about where we think we should be for going across here. And we are. So I'm going to now start heading towards this pin. I'll leave it in until the last minute so to keep straight. But then I'm just going to stop and take my pin out. We don't sew over pins because they it can bend them. It can send out the timing on your machine and send it need, needing to go to the repair person. And we don't want to do that. So that's expensive, isn't it? And, and interferes with fabric buying money. So and then just make sure your pieces are lined up. It's a little bit off for this one for mine, but I can even it up with my sewing. Maybe one more. And then across here again now. So plenty of practice with pivoting here, which is great, a great technique, and I, I use it a lot. use it a lot with the plique, a lot with um, dressmaking. Down this side, I estimate again where we are. And there we go, 
And then we're just going to take that pin out as we head over. Make sure your fabric isn't folded underneath you. And then we are going to go do a few reverse stitches here just because we're at the end. So take the needle out of the work, lift your presser foot up and snip your threads. Now I'm using this contrasting thread so that you can see and hopefully you won't. So this is what you're wanting to have by the time you've finished. So you can see we're probably one stitch off at that corner there, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. So we've got our stitched edge here. OK, the next thing you're going to do now is, and it's going to feel quite scary, but you're going to have to trust me and go with it. It's going to take some scissors or some snips. And then what I want you to do, hopefully you can see all of this. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to do a snip using the points only of your scissors so that you don't snip through your stitches. And we're going to just go into that corner until we're one or two stitches away from, from our stitching line. So let me show you where. So scissors are going in and I'm just cutting through that fabric there into that point until I'm about a thread or two away from the edge. Can you see? Hopefully you can see that. So all of the, the, the edges like this, so again here on the neckline, let's turn it round. And it feels really scary, but, but go for it. If you do snip through your threads, just go put your, your um, piece of fabric back in. Join your threads here where you go over these threads for a stitch or two and just go past the point that you've snipped through and then just come back down again. And that will just correct it for you. So again, just a little snip in towards that corner there. So you're just like one or two threads away from the corner and from your stitching line. And again here, see that one? And again here, so in four places. We use this on neckline for dresses as well when we're doing dressmaking. So again, right up to those stitches, but not through them. Then the other thing we're going to do on the corners that are on the outside corners is we are going to take off some of this seam allowance here and we're just going to snip through and across so we're within a few threads, probably a bit too generous, um, a th few threads of our stitching line. And what that's going to do is it's just going to enable us to take some of that bulk out for when we turn these around. So at the top of both of these pieces here, And we're just going to take those off. Don't take it off all the way because actually these bits here will tuck down inside those straps and we'll just anchor the rest of the threads in. So don't try and cut those off as well to neaten it off. I had a friend who'd um, got over CD and she said, I need to neaten it up, I need to neaten it up. And I'm like, no, leave it because it does actually mean that when you put those threads through, when you turn it around the right way, that'll just give you a bit of length and to make sure that your dress doesn't stop start fraying when it's being played with or being worn. So I want you to do get to this stage now with both this piece, and I've already done this piece here, which is the back. So let's keep an eye on we know from our the strength of our length of our straps, which is the front and the back. So again, on this piece here, once you've sewn it, you're going to just snip into those corners. But not through the threads. Try and get as close to the point of point at which you pivoted as well, because that's quite crucial too. There. And again here. Yeah. And then on these corners here, we're just going to cut through, but up to but not through. And leave, leave a little of a couple of um threads, otherwise it, it'll start and get fluffy on those seam points. But you're just taking that bulk out. So it'll make it nice when it comes to be turned. OK, so if you get to yourselves to this stage now, then we'll, we'll move on to turning these round the right way and I'll show you how to do that. So the next thing we're going to do is actually just going to press this now while it's flat. And we're going to just take these over to our iron and we're going to press these two pieces flat. That sets the stitches and makes everything lie nice and flat for us before we start to turn it the right way round. So once these have been um, pressed, as I've just done now, then what we're going to do now with these is we are going to turn around. The thing that you can do is you can fold these seams open with your fingers and then do what's called finger pressing, which is really helpful little tip. And you just press it open on that sewn seam. So just use your fingernails just to fold that back on these side bits and it'll give you a bit of a starting point. And you'll see how well these corners now lie. 
when you're laying them flat. See how that can open right out? If it hadn't been clipped in the corner, it wouldn't lie out, um, lie flat. And again, on this straight bit here for this neckline, you can just fold that flat with our fingernails. And it does just help it when you're turning it round. And again here, let's just give that one a bit of a finger press as best as we can. It's almost encouraging the fibres just to lie flat where we want them to. And I have to say, if, you can, if you've got the patience to make small lunar clothes like this, you've definitely got the patience for dressmaking or for making children's clothes. Because the, if you imagine this on three or four or five times bigger, it's much easier. You've got much more room to, to work with and get your fingers involved. Okay, so let's just do this last little bit and that'll help that move. So then what we're going to do now is just turn this round. So let's take something here. Just poke your finger into the strap and then just start to move it through. And then what I like to use is a trusty knitting needle, depending on the size, and you can just usually just poke it through. Now what we're trying to do, let's use the point, but be very careful, is we're trying to encourage this to turn round the right way without poking a hole in your fabric. And believe me, if you're too rough with it, you really will go through your fabric and it'll make a hole. You might be able to recover, but you might not. The next thing you can do is you can try and pull them open with your fingers. And if that doesn't work, you can take a pin and just poke it in and then just ease out your, your edges. And that's probably going to work the best for us just for now without poking a hole. But just take it gently. You're just poking your pin a little bit in and don't pull too hard because you will pull the fibres out from the seam and make a fluffy edge and we don't want that fluffy edge, we want it to be lovely and crisp. See how that just flicked then, it just does sometimes. So just keep, just keep your wits about you while you're doing this bit. And hopefully with having finger pressed those seams, it does just mean that this is all going to just lie nice and flat for us. Just see the, the threads poking through for the colour of thread that I've used, which is the dark one, so that you can all see. Obviously, if you've got a coordinating thread, then you should be fine. So there's one little bit out, and we can see now how this is lying flat in the corner where we did that little snip. And let's go on to the other one now. So just poke your finger in to start it off. Use your knitting needle if you can, just to get it. Oops. Push through a little bit more, do a little bit of tweaking. As much as you can. Gently lose the, use the point if you can poke it out with that a little bit. Hopefully I'm on camera. I can't see, I've had to turn my camera around so it's difficult for me to see. I've got to learn how to film these properly. I'm trying this new camera angle you see, so hopefully it's working. And then just use your pin just to ease those bits out. Very, very carefully and gently. This isn't a time for rushing or for brute force on these. Right up to that corner. And you can just see your stitches on the edge where you can see your stitches there, look, on mine. So you can see once you get to your thread, you know you're absolutely on that stitched line and there's no nowhere further for it to go. So again, that's nice. And here again. So I'm just looking for those stitches now just to show me that I'm all the way through and got everything all lined up nicely. Yep, there they are. And again on this side bit here. So now what I want you to do is just take this piece now, make sure it lies flat on your ironing board. So get it nice and flat. And then you're just going to press this into place and that will then, with we put a little bit of steam on if you like, just make sure that on these side bits that you're absolutely up to that stitch line and that it's not folded in like that because we want it to be the right size and it needs to be right out to that stitch line. So really pull it out so you can see your stitches on there and then just press it a bit at a time and then press that all flat but then that will be the back of Daisy's dress that we've just done there. 
Okay, and then once you've pressed that one, let's come back to this one. We're going to finger press these edges again like I have just done because I think that does help it sit better. Just run your fingernail across on all of those edges and then turn it round the same way like you have this one. And then I want you to press that one as well. So we're going to end up with the two pieces that are pressed. So if you pop off and do that and then come back again when you've done that and we'll move on to the next stage. So after we've pressed these two bodice pieces now, we've got these lovely, nice crisp seams. That's the thing about 100% cotton. It really does um, iron press really nicely. We've got them both the same. So we've got all nice, all our edges are enclosed. All our corners have turned nicely. If you find you're getting a bit of puckering in one corner because it won't lie flat, that means you've not taken it close enough into the corner to those fibres. So just go a couple of fibres closer in your snipping, you know, turn it around the other way and do a couple of um, fibres into that snipping and that that will just um, help that all balance out for you. So I'm just noticing that this one might not be quite pulled out as much as I might have wanted it to have been. It's worth just getting these right. Okay, so the next stage we're going to do now is a bit that might seem a bit peculiar when you're actually doing it in the pictures and it can be difficult to explain. But the squarer neckline here with this higher front piece, if you look at the two, one's got longer straps, that's actually the back piece and this is the front. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open up and we're going to join the front and the back together at this side seam here. Okay. So we're going to open it up to our, our stitching line and have it flat. What we're then going to do is take the corresponding other bodice piece and we're now going to put the right side of the fabric, so the top fabric that we want for the outside of the dress, and the lining pieces together. So if you do it the wrong way round, you're going to have lining to top. We don't want that. We want this to be lining fabric to lining fabric and top fabric to top fabric. Okay, and the other thing that you can do on here as well is you can do something that we're using quilting that's called nesting your seams. If you push the seam allowance of this of one of them to the left and the seam allowance of the other side to the right, when you actually put these together on that seam allowance just there, you can push one to the right and those seams kind of lock in together at that sewing point because you've got bulk on one side and bulk on the other. And then what I want you to do, once you've got that perfectly matched, is to take a pen. Oops, not that one. That one ended up on the floor. Um, take a pen, another one, if you drop it like I do, and then pop it straight through to hold that seam together. Because now we can kind of move things around as we want. So next thing we're going to do now is match up this side seam here. And put a pin in. Cotton can be a bit stiff sometimes because it, the fibres are so tightly woven together. And then we're going to line this up as well. If you've got a slight difference in length, don't worry too much. That depends on seam allowance and all sorts of things. We can, we can even that up as we go along. So again, another pin on this side here. We're then going to go to our sewing machine and we're going to sew. Start here and we're going to do a back tack just to um, secure our stitches. Across to this point here, when we hit those that dark stitch in that I've got it might be it'll be a different color on yours but when you hit the stick the row of stitches that was sewing um the two pieces together originally you're going to stop and just slightly because can you see we've got a slight v in this you're going to stop at that point just readjust your fabric so you can then again start sewing down this side here let's have a go and see how we get on shall we putting my pins out of the way tidying up I don't know about you but my craft space gets trashed okay let's hope this is going to all be nice and clear for you without my arms in the way and so we're going to start on the edge here we're going to use that same seam allowance that we we're using before about a quarter of an inch so I'm going to start off with a couple of stitches and reverse just to that just secures those stitches so they won't come undone while we're working with it and then as we get to this pin we'll take it out and we're heading up that seam to the point where the dark stitches are. We're not going to sew over our needle. We're going to put our, our needle down into the work and just take that pin out when we're really close. Making sure everything's lying nice and flat underneath. 
couple more stitches in towards that place and I'm just you might not be able to see but I'm just stopping on there so my needle's down in the work I've lifted my presser foot and now I can pivot again this work and then we put the presser foot down and then we start off in this direction here when we get to the pin take it out and then just a few reverse stitches just to hold that together if I was being really careful with this, and if I wasn't demonstrating for you guys on TV, TV, YouTube, whatever, I wouldn't have used this dark thread on this pink fabric. Just because, whilst you shouldn't be able to see the stitches when this is all put together, and it is a lining fabric, but even still, let's take pride in our work. It's not bad, actually. You can't see very easily, but I probably would have changed that those stitches across. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the ironing board and we are going to... I would have changed it, sorry, before I go into that, I would have changed it for a, for a colour-coordinated thread is what I was trying to say. I think I hinted at it without actually saying. But you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to see it then and I want, I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. And so I'm going to go here and I'm going to open this out now and press that going forwards and then I'm going to turn it round and I'm going to open this out here and I'm going to just press along that seam there. What you'll see then is that when we fold this across and flatten it out, that seam there is going to be really quite nice and neat. The other thing that I'll do is I'll show you how to take a little bit of bulk out of that if we can. I want to see my allowance has turned over, that might be accounting for some of it. So let me just go and press this open and then you'll see how much flatter it lays. Okay, so I've just flattened that out now, and now when we just pull that onto there, we get a lovely, nice, crisp underarm seam there. And incidentally, this is the same way that you would do this on a on a on a adult or a child's piece of clothing as well. It might be slightly. This was at an angle because of the pattern piece. That would be an angle, and generally speaking, you try to be at right angles when you come off to a seam. But again, on this, these small things, it doesn't matter. And that's it from the inside. So that's all looking nice. So what I'm going to do now is do the same thing here. So we're going to open up our pattern piece, our um, fabric pieces. And we're going to have top fabric to top fabric. And the first thing we're going to try and do is not worry about the hems. Let's just match up this point here. And we're going to match those, those two pieces there. Look slightly off there. Let me just put those together nicely. Okay, and now we're going to push one seam allowance one way, and that one seems to want to go that way, and one the other, and you'll feel that those will nest in together. So let's take our pin and anchor that point first. Okay, so that's just holding those pieces together, and then we can come back to here. We can put a pin in here, and then we're going to put, match those sides up together as well, and put a pin in here. And as I say, when we were pressing this side and showing you, once this is in the round, we can't get to these seams quite as easily. We have to start and use um, pressing tools or putting a rolled up towel underneath our, underneath our work and thread that through to try and get it open. So as I say, having the iron and ironing board close by when you're doing this is really useful. So again, let's start and start backwards and forwards a couple of stitches just to anchor our threads. We're going to go up this side here. And we're going to stop at that point again where we were. Take it slowly as you get close to your pin. Anchor your needle down into your work so that it holds it steady for you. Doesn't let it slip. And then a couple more stitches forward. Three actually. And then just needle in your work. Lift your presser foot up. Twist it round. And then that will allow you just to change that angle of, without it all scrunching up underneath your press a foot oh, that's it. and down to the end reverse stitch just to hold that at the bottom there and then needle out of the work and we can take our threads off again trimming threads as you go along is great because it does mean that you don't have so much tidying up to do at the end and again here let's just open these seams out here we can just finger press it a little bit we'll have a quick look at the intersection in case we want to undo it <laughs> but no, that's going to work quite nicely again, nice and neatly there. So we're just going to iron this one and I'll pop back. So here we are now. We've got our nice, lovely seam there. Lovely seam there. If we look on the right side of our dress, 
then again this is lovely and neat and looks really nice so the only thing that you can do is just check and see and where you've got under here any seam allowance here we can just trim that off because that's just a little bit of extra bulk. I know it only seems minuscule amount, but sometimes it can make a difference. And in actual fact, on here, look, I caught up a little bit of the seam allowance. So I'm just going to trim that off as well because that will stop that from making a making it at bulky. So that's one side done. Let's come the other side. And again, just fold that seam forward, and then anywhere where we've got just off towards at right angles that diagonal there just taking those bits off it is just minimal but on larger garments it can make a difference so the next thing I want to do is actually try this onto your character because we don't want to get our character made and then it not to fit keep your fingers crossed folks come on Luna get your ears in get your hands in a lovely new dress that we're starting to make for you to wear. It's going to match your eyes beautifully, this is. So that does fit on. And this is the tightest part of the whole outfit. So again, the higher bit is at the front and the straps are going to come over the top like that. And that's going to fit really nicely. Let me just show you move the machine back it. And that's going to fit really nicely when that fits on top there. So happy with that. We'll have the plastered or buttons on the top there. But yes, you can get that on. That's always a good start if, you're, if your character can get the, the um, garment on that you're making for them. So let's just take this off again, Luna. Watch your arms. That's it. Arms up for a soldier. Who else used to say that to their children or had it said to them when they were younger? Right. There we go. Okay, Luna, back to where you were waiting. And here we have... So that's our completed bodice now. The only thing we need to do now, if you're tired at this stage and need to take a break, that's fab fine. The only thing we're gonna do next is, or either next or towards the end, is I'm gonna sew a press stud on either side of here and then put a decorative button on the top, just so that that hides, hides that button. That's the fastening and closing for it. Um, shall I do that now? Yeah, let's, let's do that bit now and we can have a look at that. I'll probably save the button on the top though until I've finished because I want to see the scale of it when it's on. I'm going to wait. Oh, you see what I mean? Procrastination central, honestly. Right, okay, let's let's move on to the skirt next and um, we'll do the finishing off um, steps later. So grab your skirt pieces together and I'll meet you back here. <laughs> 